Hi, just a quick video on a little circuit that I thought I'd uh, build up and breadboard test here. It is a precision 1 amp uh, current generator and well I thought well you know in theory it should work but in practice I thought there might be a few issues so I thought I would uh, just lash it up on the breadboard and um, you know see how well this thing actually performed now what I'm actually trying to do is get a as I said a precision one amp output which is pretty high for a precision constant current output and by precision I'm talking you know point oh from better than point 0.05 percent um, and absolute so it's not uh, trimmed or anything like that and the way I'm doing that is using a precision uh, LTC double six double five dash 1.25 volt voltage reference and that's uh, normally 0.025 percent accurate so you know uh, really quite a decent chip you know it's like ten or twelve dollars in one off uh, quantity and basically I'm using that as a uh, precision voltage reference driven across a precision resistor. In the final product, I was going to have a 0 .002%, uh, sorry, 0 0.02% uh, precision resistor in here of 1.25 ohms. And of course, Ohm's law, 1.25 volts across 1.25 uh, ohms, you get precisely one amp. Now, what you can do with these um, series uh, voltage references or um, you know uh, some of them you can actually the ground doesn't have to be ground so you can actually float that above ground and what I'm doing is using a, a precision op amp here I've chosen OPA uh, 376 for the job you know just a really low offset voltage so that the error the offset error of this thing is less than you know the uh, point 0.025% of the 1.25 volts I want here and I won't go into the math there but anyway nice precision uh, op amp in there and basically what I'm doing like normally this these precision references can only source you know 5 10 milliamps at best kind of thing so you know it's not like you can get one amp out of it so we put in a series pass transistor an MPN one and just so happens in the data sheet for the LTC double six double five it shows you exactly that configuration a boosted output current configuration with an MPN transistor it also shows you another one boosted output current with and a uh, PNP transistor and um, some other manufacturer data sheets use a PNP one as well but this one shows you know look 2N2222 uh, I max the maximum output current is set by uh, you know the current capability MPN transistor so I thought okay I'll put in a Darlington because a you know a double two double two is not going to be able to do an amp and this chip I think from memory can only draw like a source like five milliamps maximum so really the gain of uh, this transistor here isn't going to give us our one amp output here so I thought I'd choose a uh, Darlington NPN a KSD 1692 which looked like it would do the job I'm not going to go into data sheets and explain uh, why I just want to show you the uh, the result I'm actually uh, getting here and basically the good thing about this voltage reference is that it has a, um, a force output and a sense output now most series voltage references don't have that they just have a fixed voltage output you know 1.25 volts 2.55 whatever the output voltage is this one has a sense one that so you can connect it directly across like a precision four terminal resistor and you know that's that's really quite nice and that's what allows you in this configuration to use this MPN transistor and then feed it back and of course you've got to have a minimum output capacitance on here as well uh, for stability because a voltage reference has an internal error amplifier and I knew that and of course error amplifiers uh, just like uh, linear uh, regulators and low dropout regulators, they can oscillate if you don't have the correct, you know, uh, bypass capacitors on the input and the output. So that's why I wanted to breadboard this thing up. I wasn't sure. I had a funny feeling that, you know, look, it's in the up, it's in the data sheet. You know, it should just work, but does it? Hmm. Yeah. Let's find out. Now I forgot to finish uh, explaining how this thing actually works. Um, this. Uh, op amp here senses the output voltage across this uh, output uh, current shunt resistor here and then you know and it just basically it's a buffer that's all it is and buffers that voltage to the ground pin so it raises the ground up instead of being connected through to normal uh, ground it is 
the output of the op amp here. So you raise that ground signal up so the difference between the output sense line here, which will be tapped, you know, on a, in, in my final circuit, tapped off like a four terminal current shunt resistor like this, then 1.25 volts is going to be present directly across that resistor. And by Ohm's law, you know, that's we're going to get a constant current out of here of one amp. And of course, all the current flows, or almost all of it, flows through the Darlington NPN transistor up here with only a tiny, you know, a couple of milliamp, milliamp or two. This KSD 1692 I chose actually for one and a half amps collector current. I think it's like only one milliamp base current or something like that. So, you know, it's really nice high gain Darlington transistor. It should in theory work well. But um, yeah, so this one amp output here, you may be wondering what this diode's uh, doing down here. Well, even though this op amp, nice precision one, is a rail to rail, if you are feeding this into a direct short, which you may want to do, you know, you calibrate in a multimeter or something like that, it's got a, nice, a tiny current shunt in there, right? Then uh, you're bringing this input here right down to ground, and that, and also the output right down technically to the ground rail here doesn't work that well you even though they're called rail to rail you are still going to get you know f uh, tens of millivolts uh offset voltage and of course that just ruins your day so what you do is you just put a series diode here it's dropping you know it'd be a shocky type even though i haven't drawn that you know 0.3 volts or even a standard diode at 0.6 volts and then it just raises effectively uh, the input uh, to, well, it raises the voltage here, uh, sorry, um, and on the non-inverting input at least 0.3 or 0.6 volts above. So it's just above, uh, so it's well above any uh, ground sense issues with this thing, and so you're, so you're avoiding the offset voltage issues right down at the low end of the rail. So that's why, anyway, that circuit should, in theory, work, but I had a thought that uh, this thing could actually oscillate and it may not work that well. And sure enough, I built the damn thing up and well, no, it was horrible. So what I've peeled it back to, let's go over here to my breadboard. Now unfortunately the voltage reference only comes in one of these tiny little pain in the ass uh, 065 millimeter pitch um, MSOP uh, packages. Oh, just awful. Really, but uh, so I put it on an SO8 adapter here. Pain in the ass SO8 adapter had the wrong body width on it. This, I think I got these in the mailbag. The wrong body width. So I've had to actually bend the pins down in there. Absolutely horrible. Anyway, there's my op amp, which is an SO8. And this thing, even though it's um, 0.65 millimeter pin pitch, I was able to squeeze it onto uh, with a bit of, uh, you know, trickery down there onto the SO8. I might get the macro lens and show you that up close. So there you go, even though it's an SO8 adapter, the two middle pins can solder directly on there and what I did is just lift up the outer pins and then just, you know, put some little jumper wires over there like that. So that's how I can fit a different, a smaller pin pitch one onto a standard SO8 adapter because I didn't have any adapters of the right pitch. Anyway, so this damn thing didn't work. So what I've done is I've basically uh, take, I've disconnected the op amp here. So just imagine that's not there. And I've just got my voltage reference with a 2N uh, 2222 transistor in there. I've got a load on there of uh, two 22 ohm resistors in parallel. So, you know, we're talking, this thing should generate about 110 milliamps or thereabouts. You know, well under the amp, uh, one amp I want. Um, but I just uh, scaled it back to get exactly the same circuit that they've got in the application node here. And, you know, the bypass, yeah, I've got no bypass caps directly on there, but the whole idea of this was that, um, look, if it worked on a breadboard like with this, with the bypass caps sort of, you know, like a centimetre or, or two away at most kind of thing with, you know, going through a breadboard. If it's stable there, then you can be pretty confident when you tighten the loops up and everything on your final PCB layout, it's going to work a treat. So, you know, I really wanted uh, good confidence that it worked on the breadboard. But, you guessed it, it doesn't. And that is my 1.25 volts output voltage. And as you can see, 200, 400, 600, 800 uh, 1 volt, 1 1.2, you know, it's near to there, but look how fuzzy it is. It's just got all crap on it. And if I have a look 
at uh, this is the sense output by the way and if I have a look at the force output pin look at this hey oscillation there we go look at that ah oh, Bob's your uncle so that right there is 20 millivolts per division AC coupled that's my sense output look it's just off absolutely horrible ah oh, man so just ignoring all that, I've just got their basic circuit in there. I've got a uh, 10 microfarad ceramic uh, output cap. I've got um, a uh, ceramic input uh, bypass cap. Albeit, yeah, they are on the breadboard, but you know, 2N2222, they make it look like this thing will just work. And you know, IMAX, uh, you know, they don't even give you sort of, you know, a maximum recommended output. So this thing, just doesn't work in the application note. Maybe if we tighten the loops up a bit. Oh, but geez, it's, you know, it's a bit touchy. So I actually uh, expect the PNP one possibly to be more uh, stable in that respect. But this, for example, like, you know, 35 milliamps uh, maximum output. So I don't really want to uh, press that one into service to try and get my one amp output. I wanted to, uh, you know, persevere with this circuit and see if I could get it. So that's my sense output there watch what happens if i disconnect the input bypass resistor and i've got this coming from my uh rigol linear bench supply five volts by the way the input uh voltage really doesn't make a uh, make a difference at all let's remove that and you can note that that's the input bypass cap and that's my sense output you notice the noise went up now i'll just whack in a another bypass cap in there to replace that oh look at that there we go Woohoo! now one interesting thing with this Rigol scope look I'm not sure I can't remember which uh, firmware version I'm running but I may have found a firmware bug look at this right you know it's like it's not uh, triggering properly it's jumping all over the place now if we stop that of course we should get a nice clean waveform but we don't look it's furry and like it's you know it's jumping all over the shop just like you get on that now i'm not sure if that's a feature now when you change the time base but you know it works so that's what i would have expected when you press the stop button but no it doesn't i don't know feature or bug you tell me anyway so that's how sensitive this thing is just to you know uh, the bypass cap like that in there so that input uh, bypass cap seems uh, pretty critical so what i might do is actually go in there and like solder it directly on the pins of the uh adapter or something like that maybe not directly onto the chip itself but maybe onto the adapter and well that might improve things all right so what i've done is soldered uh, bypass uh, input cap directly across that and let's see what we get look at that absolutely awful and that's directly across the pins of the SO8 adapter. How close does this bloody input bypass cap need to be? Unbelievable. So if we put the original one back on there as well, look, there we go. That's knocked that down. I mean, it's still bad. I mean, it's still oscillating, especially for a precision reference. It's absolutely useless, but there you go. That is loop stability of the error amplifier inside this bloody voltage reference. Ugh, it's all over the shop. Now, of course, if we put no load on there, it should be okay. And, yep, there it is, 1.2502 volts. And, yeah, I have actually uh, done the, I have uh, configured it without the um, series pass transistor in there at all. So just the voltage reference, V in, V out, tied uh, force and sense together. And, yeah, it's, you know, it's exactly spot on like that. So it's okay, but once you put any sort of load on this thing it's useless it just takes off so there it is normally and let's hook up a 40 uh, 4 ohm resistor which is about 28 milliamps or something like that here we go there we go look you can see it not nah, that you know for a precision um, reference it's just no good it's hopeless and if we swap the transistor for our high gain uh, Darlington KSD 1692 and let's have a look what happens. This is with no load at all. There we go. And that's the force line. There's the force line. Woohoo!
Look at that. And of course, this is going to be a function of the uh, output uh, capacitance as well. So I've got a 3.3 mic uh, poly cap in there instead of my, uh, well, in parallel with my 10 mic uh, ceramic. And I can actually, you know, take those out. And I've had to play around with it. And here we go. We change our config, we change the oscillating frequency. Look at that. And the type, totally, but the thing is still oscillating and that is the sense output that is not the uh, force output so here's the force output look at that oh man there's a shocker Woo! so sorry for those who like a happy ending on their video i said this one will be quick so there is no happy ending i haven't finished playing around with this thing at all i just wanted to show you that uh you know don't just trust the application uh, notes like that in the application circuits build them up and verify that they actually work because this one oscillates like a bitch so sure yeah if you build this up on a pcb you know it's going to be uh, the loops are going to be uh, tighter and of course you choose your components carefully and it's going to be better but the fact is you know you may not get this on the first spin or the second or the third you know pain in the ass so if you can't get it just you know at least um, semi-stable on a breadboard like this just using uh, you know um, when you're trying different types of input and output caps and things like that and it's just all over the shop then you know you're going to be in trouble you know you just don't have good confidence in this thing building up on a breadboard and yeah like um, try doing an amp on this thing and other stuff like forget it you know that's just the um, transistor you know on its own with no load and it's oscillating like that it's just crazy but hey, you know, that's what I suspected it would do, and it certainly did. So I'm glad I didn't uh, go straight to PCB on this circuit. And so just be wary of these sorts of things. Don't trust those app nodes. Hmm. Especially stuff like this with error amps. And yeah, this is going to, uh, ver there's going to be a lot of factors involved here for the uh, stability of uh, the error amplifier inside this uh, reference. So, you know, really, it, there's a lot involved in getting this thing right, and it's not going to happen today. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video. Catch you next time.